Hello and welcome to another Hour of Devastation Draft League. This is Old Man Pool. We've opened up a spicy rare that we've seen once. It was pretty good, although I think we actually killed it on turn four. Um, I have yet to play with it though, so we're probably going to go ahead and take this Omen Eternal and see how good our uh, Black Beat strategy can be. Obviously this is great in Zombies if that deck ends up being open. Uh, there are some other good cards in the pack. Uh, notably, Doomfall and Torment of Venom, I think, are both playable. Torment of Venom is quite good. And unfortunately, we're taking a great black card and passing a couple of black cards, but what, do you, what can you do about that, right? Resolute Survivors is good. I think both the Deserts are fine, although I'm not sure either of them were first picks. Devastator's good. Shark is good. Bunch of stuff. But Omniturnal, I think, is not only the sweetest pick, it's probably the best pick. Ooh, and Chaosma? <sighs> hmm. Those really do encourage very different kinds of decks. I think Chaos Maw is pretty good, but like Omni Eternal really wants to be beating down, and Chaos Maw really wants to be a finisher and like a controlling deck. I think I'm just gonna take this anyway, though. Like the power is very high. If we don't end up going into black, um, or at least not aggressive black deck, then Chaos Maw is pretty good. Um, alternative, we would take like Wretched Camel if you're staying on color, and that's just way lower power level. Manticore Eternal, I guess, fits a little bit better with the Omen Eternal theme, and that's a pretty good card too, but let's take the Chaos Maw. These are both sweet cards, I'd be happy to end up with in a deck that liked either of them. Okay. Magmaroth has been kind of lukewarm for me, it's fine, but not crazy. Unconventional Tactics is fine, Sharpshooters is good. Firebrand Archer is fine. Kind of just want to take the Torment of Venom here. It's a little bit of a shame because I love me some ramp decks, but I haven't, I haven't skewed aggressive for a couple of drafts, I suppose. So maybe just Torment of Venom and Omni Eternal end up being pretty good. Third pick Torment, I think, is not necessarily like a huge slap in the face sign, but it's pretty good. Let's go ahead and pick this guy up. Yeah, okay, so Black's looking pretty open here. Like Lethal Sting, Bone Slasher, and Carrion Screecher are all pretty good. I like Wretched Camel too. I think of those, Lethal Sting is the best. This card has been unimpressive to me, but it's still straight up removal. Removal's pretty great. It actually is great with the Omen Eternal. You kill something, put the counter on there, and then you can get in for damage, and it doesn't matter. So, Lethal Sting seems like a good pickup. I'm not saying we won't play Chaos Maw, since red seems pretty open too. But it definitely is worse in a, a beat deck. But yeah, Burning Fist Minotaur this late too? That seems pretty great. In fact, there's a lot of good playables in here. White's maybe getting cut. White's not looking super crazy good. But like Hippo and Ritualist are both great green cards. Maybe Blue's getting cut a little too. Oh, okay. And Desert of the Glorified's nice here. I don't hate Burning Blades, but those usually come around later than the Deserts. And I do want a Desert for sure. Uh, a little bit more blue here, I suppose. Alright. Okay, well, maybe we're running out a little bit here. Granitic Titan's not the most exciting. Dagger of the Worthy's fine in some decks. I'm not quite sure we're going to end up in absurdly aggressive at this point. Although, we certainly could. Um, we have two good aggressive creatures and some removal, which kind of fits wherever. But... It's not like we've got two drop, two drop, two drop. And Dagger of the Worthies, I think, unplayable outside of a very aggressive deck. It takes Crowner of Souls and just kind of say, maybe we're going to go a little bit later. I think I'm going to take the Traveler's Amulet, though. This is really nice if we end up wanting to splash something. And it's actually not terrible as playing just as a land as well. It's kind of a, a slow pickup, but it does fix your mana. Wow. Wow. Okay, I'm pretty sure black's open. Black is crazy open here. Is there any argument to take the camel over the sting? I do like camel a lot. Sting just seems great though. It is a little bit worse in multiples. Again, throwing counters around isn't your favorite thing to do, but I think we still take the second one over the first camel. There was another camel that might come around. Fingers crossed. Okay. Uh, I guess like Birching Rot Beast here. I think I want that more than the Moaning Wall. Probably better than Graven Abomination, although not great. Well, we saw the late Burning Fist Minotaur, but we actually haven't seen tons of red other than that. 
So we may not necessarily be in red. A Richard Campbell's good pickup. That I was mentioning earlier. Works well with Lethal Sting too. In that it is a little bit of a tempo hit, but you get to throw this away and make your opponent discard as well. We want to pick deserts pretty highly, I think. I mean, you always kind of do, but maybe especially in this. Uh, I guess I'll take the unconventional, unconventional tactics. White seemed really pretty not open. I guess maybe Feral Prowler? I don't know. None of these colors have seemed, like, absurd for us. I think the tactics has higher upside than the Prowler. Ooh, wow, those are both pretty great. Hmm. Bone Slasher is pretty dang good. I think I actually want the Wretched Camel more, though. Having two drops is really important, and Lethal Sting works pretty well with the Camel, so... Uh, Grizzly Survivor is so bad. I think I'm... Uh, I think I'm gonna take the Dutiful Servants. On the off chance we do end up, like, sliding into zombies in the next pack. I just really don't want to play the, the Marauder. And there's, like, if we end up in a dedicated Zombies deck, the Dutiful Servants does do work. All right. Well, there's a Sand Strangler, which is pretty high upside. The only black black card we've got is a Wretched Camel. Frontline Devastator's good. Thorn Moloch's good. Kind of tempted to take the Sand Strangler though. It kind of fits with the the Slight Desert theme we've got going, and the card is just super powerful. Also, gives us the opportunity to maybe play Chaos Maw. I mean, we can play Chaos Maw and still play like Omni Eternal, Burning Fist Minotaur. Yeah, let's let's see if we're we can be red here. Carve our way into a little bit of some good red cards in this pack, and even if we don't see tons in game three or uh in round three, draft pack three, something. Ooh, wow. If near Dreadlands is just great for us. Huh. River Hoopy. Someday. Someday or Hopo or uh, someday I'll know how to say it too. If I ever actually draft, I'll look it up. Um, I think someone said it was a hoopoo. Anyway, I want to play that deck so bad at some point. And I passed like a couple of the beginning of the format, back when people were passing them, like me, I guess. And now you never see them, but even your Dreadlands is just great. It's a desert, which we like, and it's got to be the biggest or one of the biggest desert payoffs too. So easy pick though. Okay. Cursed Horde, Survivor's Encampment, Carrier, Carrion's Creature, and Ruin Wrath. I'm kind of tempted just to take the Encampment. We have so many desert payoffs. This card does wheel sometimes, but we really want to get our deserts. We only have two right now. This is only search for basics, right? Yeah. Cursed Horde isn't bad. We have... I guess that's pretty good. Well, I guess it's already kind of big. So maybe it doesn't matter as much. Make the Wretched Camels indestructible, that doesn't even... We don't care all that much about it. Lurching Raw Beast. Um, mm, 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 mm. And Ruin Rat. Yeah, this card just doesn't seem that impressive in our deck. Especially if maybe we're going to play a little bit more of a controlling game. Let's, let's pick up the Survivor's Encampment. I really want to make sure we hit our Desert. Our Desert count here. Okay. Manticore Eternal, I think, is the most powerful card. We could consider taking Gilded Ceradon, because we probably will have Deserts, or Kenra Eternal, just for curve considerations. I think the Eternal is still the best, though. Ceradon's not bad, but this card is uh, always will get through for three, and frequently trades as well, so I like that. Not a terrible blocker, either. Not fantastic, but... Ooh, man, there was a Torment of Hailfire. This is late. And I'm kind of tempted just to pick that up here and just play for a late game. We've got Chaos Maw, Torment. I mean, Black Red is not generally what you think of as a control deck, but we have a handful of removal spells already. We're going to have um, the uh, If Near Deadlands, which gets better as the game goes longer. Yeah, let's pick up the Torment here. Let's go deep. This feels pretty sweet. In that case, I think we might be on board for Moaning Wall, but uh, Wretched Camel, I think, is still a better pick. This is going to chump and trade a lot of the time early, and if you got a desert, it's just a heck of a beaten, so. 
I know the lethal sting works well with the camels, and I think just with what we're doing in general. Uh, I don't think Bone Slasher is what this deck wants to be doing, since we're just gonna think kind of stall for the late game. Another lethal sting. This would be our fourth. Mm, that's a lot of lethal stings. Like, and they definitely are worse in multiples. Don't think we're playing Vile Manifestation in this deck, though. Don't think we're playing Traveler's Amulet. Still hate Grizzly Survivor. I think I'm gonna take it. I'm not sure we're gonna play all four, but I think it's better than the other alternatives. So we could consider taking the Wall of Forgotten Pharaohs. Um, it is an excellent hit for all of our lethal stings. It works fairly well with Deserts as well. We do only have three. I'm very glad we picked up the Survivor's Encampment, I think. Let's pick the Wall over another Wretched Camel, I, I believe, here. Burning Fist Minotaur ends up being not a wonderful blocker, but a fine one, too. Uh, Ruin Rat. I guess Screecher over not tons else. Uh, hmm. I don't think we necessarily need another 2-drop. I'm not sure we need the Gilded Ceradon better, but Inner Eternal's pretty lackluster on defense. And I think we are just trying to play for the late game here. Yeah, not unhappy to see this guy. And Moaning Wall isn't bad either with all these lethal stings. And even a Bone Slasher, although it's funny that someone took the land over this guy. I guess maybe it's full art and someone just... I guess it doesn't matter a whole lot when they're passing. Alright, Heaven and Earth is powerful. So is Decimator Beetle. We have a lot of minus one, minus one counters we're throwing around. Doom Descender is good at picking up counters. These both require we splash for green. We do have a Traveler's Amulet, like, that's not terrible. Hmm. And Earth is pretty powerful. Cleans up the board. I'm actually not sure which is better. Decimator Beetle has just consistently impressed me an awful lot. It is a great card. Really hard for your opponent to deal with, especially if you're keeping the board fairly free of creatures. Yeah, maybe Earth is less good if we're lethal seeing a bunch along the way. I think I'm gonna take the Decimator Beetle, actually. This is... Eh, it's a little bit close, but I've been really impressed by the Beetle. Ooh, wow. Plague Belcher and... Well, we're not actually green. I was like, and Cross Crocodile Crossing. Uh, Plague Belcher seems pretty good. It still is fairly big. Maybe this deck wants Wasteland Scorpion, though? Hmm. Actually a little bit close. I think the Plague Belcher just has higher upside, though. It still does work well with, like, Wretched Camels and the like. <laughs> Maybe Almond Internal and Plague Belcher just will be able to win some games on their own. Um. Hmm. Not seeing any of the uh, the premium deserts, which is a little bit unfortunate. So we only have three. That's definitely going to be a weakness of the deck. We could take Canyon Slough just as the uh, uh, double face land. Miasmic Mummy is fine. Or is not super exciting in this deck. Yeah, we're just going to take the dual land. Ooh, wow. Magma Spray. That's great. Picking this guy up late is definitely a high pick. Uh, Soul Stinger, great with all of our minus one, minus ones everywhere. I think it's better than the Wasteland Scorpion. Yeah. Ooh, Cartouche of Ambition and Approach. We could, well, nah, who are we kidding? We gotta just take the Cartouche, right? Approach is a really great um, late game finisher, but we already have Torment of Hailfire, which kind of does the same thing. Also Chaos Maw. Cartouche is pretty high power, too. Don't really care about Bontu's monument, I don't think. I guess I'll just take a Miasmic Mummy. Um, Manticore with the Gauntlet, Brute Strength, or Supernatural Stamina. A little close. I guess Stamina's like okay with the camels and the like. Actually, probably okay with a lot of things. Not bad with Omni Eternal. Hoping not to play the Rob Beast, probably. 
E. So we didn't pick up tons of deserts, but we did take kind of all the ones we saw. And I think three will be good a lot of the time for the camels and sand strangler. We really want to draw one, though. Hey, welcome to the chat, bacon and eggs. Sorry, it took me a second to glance back at, um, at Twitch. Oh, Doom Dissenter coming back, I like. It's probably better than like Miasmic Mummy, random stuff with all of our lethal stings. It works out pretty well. I don't think we need Unburden. Aina Pack's probably worse. Uh, Wasteland Scorpion or Sideboard Blazing Volley. We do have like a billion playables. And Blazing Volley is very good against some decks. I think Scorpion is still. Well, I don't even know. We have Lethal Stings and the like. I guess this is actually a pretty good target for Lethal Sting, too. Mm, I think it's high enough power. We should take it. Another Mummy. Yeah, we. Like, nobody else was in black, pretty much. <laughs> Blazing Volley Hype. Yeah, maybe I should have taken that there, since the Scorpion is kind of replaceable. And the sideboard option is very real. Uh, Magic Order of the Gauntlet, although I don't think we're playing it. And Hyena Pack, although I also don't think we're playing it. Wow. So we're going to play... Uh, Yeah, this this is impressive. We are playing, or could play, 39 out of the 45 cards we've drafted. That's kind of absurd. I don't think I've ever had that much, actually. It means we have a lot of cutting to do, because I think we do want to go down to um, 23 playables for sure, when we've got things like Chaos Maw and Torment in our deck. So what seems worst? I don't think I love Supernatural Stamina just on its own. Probably need to shave a couple of two drops. Camels are great when we have deserts. They're probably our best two drops when we have them, but not that fantastic otherwise. The Asic Mummy's probably our worst. We're not really on the beatdown. We don't have advantages for discarding cards. Let's start with that. Oh, let's let's split up by our creatures. Yeah, I think the deck looks sweet. Like I said, I think we might be the only black drafter at the table, honestly, which is kind of absurd. I'm gonna take out the Bone Slasher. The downside's pretty real when it's not on. I think both the Plague Belcher and the Omni Eternal are strong enough that they merit keeping just on their own. And I think we do want all four lethal stings. We've got lots of things we like to put the counters on. Doom to Center, uh, Wretched Camel, Scorpion, Wall, Wall, Omni Eternal. I can cut this guy. Probably don't love Carrion's Creature. It's also good to throw on the Soul Stinger. It's good anytime when we have Decimator Beetle in play. I need to get the Hina pack. I need to get Manticore. Eternal's maybe strong enough that it justifies keeping just on its own. Yeah, we're like loaded with removal for sure. And the dream is we just wait until we can cast a Torment and kill them. We're not actually hitting them that hard in the end game. Or maybe we need like a Carrion's creature to help finish the game. Maybe Manticore for like the miscellaneous burn. Or maybe these are just good enough. Hmm. Probably can cut one more two drop. Ruin Rat seems maybe not the best, actually. I, I do like Death Touch, we'll bring it in, in some matchups. But I don't know if it's like absurd. I think it's worse than Burning Fist Minotaur. I think it's worse than the camels, Doom to Center, and the Wall. I kind of feel like four lethal things is too much, but we just have a lot of cards that we like to throw the counters on, so it can't be that bad, right? Manticore is good for the last burn. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of cool if we do like a huge torment and then drop the Manticore and kill them that way, because it's possible to go down to like the lowest possible life. I think if we're doing that, Torment's probably going to win the game anyway. I feel like Gilded Serodon and Manticore Eternal are better finishers than the Manticore, even though the Manticore is instantaneous. I really wish we had some more deserts, but... Oh, it's true, we need to play the Traveler's Amulet, too. So 
Need to bring that guy in. Need to cut three cards. I guess we could leave this as a, just a land. Yeah, it's probably not the worst. Yeah, the deck would be absurd with a Patra. It's true, I think we're splashing four. I think this is about as many minus one minus one counters as you can have in a like the in our devastation. The deck that really relied on the counters just isn't really a thing anymore. But just drawing lots of lands doesn't seem bad. So I kind of want to play 17 plus Traveler's Amulet. We have the Canyon Slough, which we can cycle away. Maybe we'll cut one of our camels. Maybe we'll cut one lethal sting. Is that bad? Lethal sting seems good. But I'm cutting like one of these cards otherwise, and I worry we just don't have enough late game without those. Mm, and maybe one lethal sting. And we definitely got sideboard options. Man, oh man, we got sideboard options. So we can make that work if we need to. But I do think I like doing 23 with the Travelers. Okay. I think the deck looks sweet. I haven't really played the black-red control deck. I'm not sure if that's really a thing very often, but I'm excited to give it a shot. Definitely picking up the, the Deadlands was good. Would have liked to hit a couple more deserts, but the deck seems pretty sweet. I'm excited to play it. Let's add in some lands. Definitely need one forest. Probably just need one with the Traveler's Amulet in tow. I recommend not that much red. We actually... We're kind of close to Mono Black, other than the Chaos Maw and the Sand Strangler and Magma Spray. Like, we have some high powered red. This is one. I mean, maybe. Maybe we just splash the Decimator Beetle only off the Survivor's Encampment and don't bother with Traveler's Amulet. Although, we still would want two sources, so we still have to bring in a forest. But maybe we don't need this guy. Eh, maybe we'll sideboard it out. I think I kind of like it. Base here. Let's play one forest. And... Got one, two, three black sources. Play ten black. And... Six red, I guess. We do need double red to... Well, I guess seven red. Because of the survivor's encampment. Kind of eleven swamps. We do need a double red towards the end of the game. But I don't think we need it as much right now. I'm not sure the man is correct there, but that feels good for my in my gut. Alright, let's jump into match one. Let's see if we can't take some people out. <laughs> 